When this grandmother met her grandson for the first time, it was a special moment. The baby was placed in her arms, and the old lady had the biggest smile. But there was one detail most people didn't notice. The old woman did a bizarre thing that would change the life of this family forever. Grandma whispers something to newborn grandson, family in shock when they discover why. Ben and his wife Claire invited the entire family over for a first look at their newborn baby boy. Everyone was excited to meet him, but there was one person whose energy was just off the charts. Ben's mother was just pacing around the garden, nervously waiting her turn. Later, Ben would find out why. When it was finally her turn, the old lady turned her body away from the family as she rocked the baby in her arms. She quickly made her way over to the corner of the porch. Looking over her shoulder as she walked, it was as if she didn't want anyone close to her and the baby. Most people didn't notice it, and they went on with chatting amongst themselves. But Ben knew his mother well. This was strange behavior. Even for his quirky mother, he decided to follow them. The porch was about five feet above the garden floor, so he could stay hidden when walking on the grass. When his mother finally stopped all the way on the edge of the porch, she was at least 30 feet removed from the nearest person, at least so she thought. She started talking to the baby in a hushed tone, convinced that no one could hear her, but Ben was listening in. That's when she said something that made the hairs in Ben's neck stand up straight. She repeatedly called her grandson by the wrong name, Lucas, and it clearly wasn't a mistake, because by the end, she even tried to convince him that this new name was his Ben sprung up. He heard that name before. With raised eyebrows, Ben walked up to his mother to ask why she called his son that name, but the answer she gave was quite weird. She hastily answered him by saying that the name was of an old family friend. I must have been confused or something, she said. But Ben didn't believe her because that name sounded too familiar. He didn't know where he heard it before, but he was sure he did. And then the behavior of his mother got even stranger. As the baby went to another family member, he saw his mother sitting alone in the corner of the garden. She was crying her eyes out. As Ben arrived at his mother, he saw her bulging red eyes. It had been a long time since he saw his mother cry like that. What's wrong, mom? He asked. But the old woman told him to just let her be Ben, had to enjoy his baby party. But Ben felt that his mother was harboring a secret. He chose to respect her wish and went back to the guests in his home. All the while, he saw his mother sobbing alone in the corner of their garden. Eventually, people left, and that included his own mother. But the name he heard kept wandering around in his head. Lucas, 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 Lucas. Where have I heard that name before? He asked his wife if she ever heard it before, but her answer was negative. She even asked him to let it go. Writing it off is not important, but it would turn out to be one of the most important names in Ben's life. Luckily for his sake, he couldn't let go. And after pondering about it all night, he reached a moment of clarity, and then it hit him. In his childhood home, there was an envelope with the same name on it, an envelope that was hidden away in the drawer of an old cabinet. His mother always kept it locked like it was her secret. But one day she left the drawer open and he saw that name. Would it still be there? Ben had to find out, so he waited for his mother's bingo night. And when he was sure she was gone, he snuck into her home. As he entered the home of his mother, he immediately ran over to the cabinet. The piece of furniture was still in the same place as when he was a child. But when he looked inside, he found nothing out of the ordinary, just a bunch of old family pictures. But then Ben was about to give up. Maybe he did blow up the importance of this name. He put the pictures back in the drawer and leaned on it, wondering what the hell he was doing. But at that moment, he felt the bottom of the drawer shift a bit. There is a false bottom in here. Adrenaline shot through Ben's body as he frantically removed all the family pictures from the drawer. And then he saw the outlines of a wooden cover concealing a hidden compartment beneath. He removed the cover and there lay an envelope with the name he was looking for written on top in. Shivers ran down his spine as he opened the envelope. There were pictures in it and a letter written by a man named Lucas Ben. Sat down and started reading. And before he knew it, his face was red and tears were rolling down his cheeks. I can't believe it, he said, crying. His emotions ran wild as he put together the puzzle pieces in front of him. Shock turned into sadness and sadness quickly turned into disbelief and anger. How could it be that mom never told me about this? 
he said, almost shouting, he decided to confront his mother with this. His mother was, at that moment in time, still oblivious to the situation that was occurring in her house. She had just finished up her bingo night and was driving home with a bottle of wine as her winnings. But back at home, there was a big surprise waiting for her. The old woman opened the front door of her house and immediately noticed something was up. Some of the lights in her house were burning, and she distinctively always switched everything off before she went out. Was there a burglar in here? She felt confused and scared as she ventured further. The lights formed a perfect path through her house, leading her exactly to the place where Ben was located. As she entered her living area, she saw her son sitting in the middle of the room with the letter. She put her hands in front of her mouth, and tears instantly started gushing out of her eyes. Oh, son, I knew this day would come. I'm so sorry, she uttered with a trembling voice. Her son looked up from his letter and peered into his mother's horrified eyes. What is this, mom? He asked Ben, told his mother to sit down in his father's old chair and explain to him who this Lucas was. Ben's mother finally promised to tell him the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. She grabbed one of the photographs from her son's hand and looked at it. Her hand stroked the surface of the Polaroid and her lips started to quiver. What his mother then said changed Ben's life forever. She pointed it to two people who were in the picture. It was a black and white picture of a young, happy couple by a lake. His mother told Ben that the woman in the picture was herself, and the man in the picture was Lucas. And Lucas, his mother said, Lucas, is your father? Ben was in shock to his knowledge he had a father named George, and the old man died just last year. How can this be? How can George not be my father? And who is this man named Lucas? To you, his mother started explaining. She told Ben that George was the biological father to his younger brother, and in all the ways that mattered, George was also Ben's father. The man clothed him, fed him, and raised him. But you were not born his son. Ben's mother said Ben was born a year before his mother met George and Lucas. His biological father was his mother's first true love. That love turned into a baby, and that baby was you. Ben's mother said, Ben didn't understand. Tears ran down his cheeks as his mother told the story of her and Lucas. Why have I never heard of that man? Ben asked. Ben also asked his mother if he could please meet Lucas, but his mother turned it down. You can't, because Lucas is dead. Ben's mother told Ben that Lucas had perished whilst fighting in the Vietnam War. When she received the letter about his death, she was devastated, and she was also pregnant with Ben at the time. She would have to raise him all alone. But everything changed when George came into her life. He was an amazing caretaker for you, Ben. You were too young to remember Lucas, so we made George your father by law. Two years later, your younger brother was born. After the story was finished, Ben did something amazing. He hugged his mother and forgave her. Immediately, he got why his mother did what she did. He wanted to keep talking all night, but he had to go before he left, though. He asked her if he could take the pictures with him, but when he looked at them back home, he started to notice something the man who he now knew to be Lucas seemed oddly familiar to him. It was like he had seen his face before in real life, but that should have been impossible. Lucas had died in battle half a year before he was born, yet the sight of his face stirred up a strange feeling of recognition. Was it from work? No, the company he worked at wasn't that large, and he could recall all their faces from his favorite bar downtown. No, Joe's Tavern hardly ever had anyone inside that was that age. But then Ben remembered his wife's favorite bakery. It was a small, family-owned shop two towns over. It was a rustic, old place, a family business that was a staple of that town for as long as Ben could remember. The original owner had passed down the business to his two sons, but the old man was still around most of the time, and something about the picture made Ben think of him. The man had the exact same features as Lucas did in the picture. Of course, the old baker had a lot more years of wear and tear on his face, but this picture was taken decades ago, the big puffy nose, the dimple in his chin. But what caught his attention the most were his eyes. If Ben didn't know better, this could have been the exact same guy. They had the same vibe, but that couldn't be Lucas was dead. His mother told him so. But what if mom was lying again? Ben wondered. He couldn't shake the feeling. He had to know. So he got in his car and drove the drive over to the bakery it was about half an hour. Ben's mind started to go crazy as he got closer. 
What if Lucas wasn't dead at all? What if mom was lying about everything? He believed her in saying that Lucas was his father. But what else was true? He was about to find out when he arrived at the bakery and opened the door. He was greeted by the two sons. They manage the bakery now and were at the front of house most of the time. Ben asked if the old man was around by any chance. The brothers both pointed to the back. He's needing, do they said. Ben asked if it was all right if he asked their father a few questions. The brothers looked at each other and nodded. Ben walked behind the counter and through the open door. There the old man sat in a half-lit room. Ben's heart raced in his chest as he observed the man kneading dough. It took a couple of seconds, but now the old baker noticed Ben standing in the room with him. He stopped meeting and got very quiet for a moment. Ben inched closer and placed the pictures on the table next to the man. The old man looked at Ben and started crying, and these tears confirmed to Ben what he secretly already thought. This man was Lucas. This man was his father. The first few minutes then, no words were spoken, just tears flowing. The man then acknowledged that his name was Lucas and that he was his father. Sit down. I will explain everything he said. The old man wiped away the tears from his eyes and looked at his son. I'm so sorry about everything. And the first thing you need to know is that this isn't your mother's fault. She didn't know. And the second thing is that I never meant to leave you. I just didn't have a choice. Lucas continued explaining. Your mother actually thought I was dead. My battalion perished in the war and most of the bodies were never found. We were all dead or presumed dead, but to nobody's knowledge, I was alive. I was captured by the Viet Cong and lived as a prisoner for two years. When your mother received the letter of my demise, she eventually moved on with her life, and I'm glad she did. There is no need to linger in pain, but when I escaped and came back home after two years, I found out that your mother had found another man. I had to make a decision. It was the most painful decision I ever had to make in my life. I decided to let the love of my life go. She was happy with her new husband, George, and I could see that he was good to you. But I did want to see you too from time to time. That's when I started this bakery. It was close enough for me to observe you too from a distance, but far enough away so I would not attract any attention. Everything went perfectly and I even started a family myself, but I never stopped loving you and your mother. After hearing that, Ben did something heartbreaking. Ben grabbed his father's shoulder and pulled the old man towards him. The two men hugged passionately for well over five minutes. Tears were flowing and smiles were edged into their faces. And at the end of it all, Ben asked a beautiful question. Would you be a part of my life again? Lucas didn't even have to think about it. He pretty much shouted yes all through his bakery. His sons and the customers were confused. But after explaining the situation to his boys, the two brothers hugged Ben as well. Ben's family had just grown by three people, and then came the important follow-up question. Ben asked his father if Lucas wanted to meet his newborn son and if he wanted to see his mother again. Lucas agreed, but admitted he was scared to face her. But once he entered Ben's home and saw his long-lost love again from up close, the most amazing thing happened. Ben's grandmother was standing in the hallway when the door opened. She was holding a sandwich in her hand, but dropped it flat on the ground. The moment she saw Lucas, the two old people jumped into each other's arms. Ben's mother couldn't believe he was alive. Would you also like to see your grandchild, Ben asked. The old man's face was filled with emotion. Yes, yes, I would, he said. Lucas held his grandson for the first time and admitted to have dreamed of this moment for years. Ben's face was all smile. He found his father and his own son had gained a grandpa and two uncles in.